The following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Thank you, Tally Olson. We are back. New York Mets baseball in the zone. I'm Ralph Tycho. It's the Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. The hosts are here, both of them. Marty Rose, how are you? Very good, Ralph. Thank you. Very good. Good. Robert Cole. Doing well, Ralph. Thank you. Good. Marty sounds more and more like his brother Barn every day. I don't know what it is. He should be sounding more and more like you. He's the younger one. That's uh, true. Lord works in mysterious ways. We just have to accept the pandemic and go out and have a church meeting and pray that it all goes away. <laughs> Sing it, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know what the hell happened to me. Um, Having a little flashback there, Ralph? I just don't know what it is. It, it, the world got to me. I don't know if we should party on the beach when the storm goes away. I, I think we should open the bars. If nothing else, and then the schools. What's happening with me? (laughs) All right. Let's talk a little Mets baseball, if there still is Mets baseball. Yeah. Well, I want to get... Okay. Well, I want to get both of your impressions on not only Cespedes deciding to pull the plug on his season, which he's entitled to do, but the whole thing, the way it was handled by him, by the public relations with the Mets, because I was listening to the game on um, on um, MLB, the, the radio broadcast, and how he was just beside himself. He was just, they got some news, obviously, from the TV side, And he says, I'm not even going to announce this. Waited till the end of the game. And Van Brody comes on. And he's a clown show. That's just my my opinion. But, Marty, you first. Well, yeah. uh, I was watching the game, I think. Uh, Was that the game that was on ESPN? No, it was TBS. Oh, it was on TBS. Okay. So I, I know I was watching the game. And, you know, they, they first announced that uh, they couldn't reach uh, Cespedes. Uh, they hadn't, hadn't heard from him. He didn't show up for the game. Nobody knew where he was or, or what happened. That was, that was the first thing. And um, then we really didn't. Really didn't hear anything else for quite quite a long time. Um, then, then eventually, uh, we heard that. I guess I saw it on Twitter first that you know he said he's opting out, and you know that that wasn't announced. Nobody knew about it apparently. Now later on, a couple of the players had different opinions. They thought that that somebody should have known or did know. Uh, but it just it just wasn't handled well by anybody. And, you know, obviously he's entitled to opt out if he wants to. You can't blame him for that. Um, he, he wasn't hitting. He wasn't happy. Uh, a lot of things involved. So, I mean, look, the guy hasn't played since, what, 2017? <laughs> so, I mean, his career is over. That's yeah. it. I mean... Well, anybody... certainly with the Mets. Certainly with the Mets. Yeah, definitely with the Mets. But, I mean, it might be for anybody because I don't see anybody uh, putting down anything for this guy who hasn't played since 2017 and... and and acts like this and pulls stunts like this. Robert. Well, yeah, pretty much, you know, like what Marty said, uh, he and I actually both posted almost at the same time. 
that, you know, he hadn't shown up at the ballpark. And then um, sometime during the game, the Braves announcer said, we got the, just got this report that there is no uh, fear of uh, – uh, yeah, Alamai anything wrong anything. with the guy? Yeah, yeah, he's okay. Right. And then uh, mm-hmm. you know, then and then actually, Marty posted it, and then I saw it myself that uh, he had opted out, and his agent is trying to say that he opted out because of the coronavirus fear. However, it's being said that when he got benched last week. Well, not bench, but he didn't play last week in Boston. He went up to the manager and said, how come I'm not playing? I need to get at bats. Okay, and the manager said, well, no, no, they, you know, this with them trying to arrest everybody. Yesterday, the manager apparently tells the players by video conference before the game what the lineup's going to be. And Cespedes was not in the lineup. And they said he expressed his displeasure of not being in the lineup. Once again, he said, is this to try to keep me from getting my at-bats? He has a bonus clause for plate appearances. Uh. And they, they, they said, no, no, you know, it has nothing to do with that. Well, apparently he felt it did have to do with that, and he packed up his stuff and he left. And then, you know, the, the Mets during the game sent somebody to his room to check on him, and he was all packed up and gone. Mm. So, you know, I mean, he's upset about, you know, maybe not getting his, you know, bonus clauses, and yet he's walking away from $2 million. So you figure it out. (laughs) Stepping over pennies to pick up the dollar, or stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. That's what it it amounts to. And not picking up any pennies. And just acting irrationally. Uh, from you know without um without a filter and i i know how that goes um <laughs> but um you but, know like like marty said too you know uh you know this this was the year for him to prove that he had anything left in the tank in order to get a contract with somebody you know i mean and he should know, have been able to do it next- in a short in a short time he could prove right. a lot and not really put himself in jeopardy. You, you know, wow, he, paid, he played 60 games. Somebody's going to fall for that. Um, yeah. Or somebody's going to benefit from for, from that. But not doing that is like uh, he's got a showcase and he's not taking it. Yep. So uh, mm-hmm. major disappointment on some levels. Marty said something. Now we can move on. Remember tweeting yeah. that or? Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Well, look, we need to we need to see Dom Smith get at bats, and and you could even uh, put him at first and give uh, um, Alonzo uh, Alonzo a half a day off. You know, uh, that that'd be great. And and I'd really like to see this Jimenez guy play more. He looks like he's got something. You Do know? you mean Jimenez? No, I think it's with a G. I think it's Jimenez. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, flashing back to when when we were kids and our favorite favorite um, oh, album was Jose Jimenez. <laughs> 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 he says, I'm a uh, farmer. Yeah. What do you grow? He says, what, take, take it, Mert. Uh, well, I get up at four in the morning. I plant the <laughs> crops. I milk the moo cows. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I, I, I grow tired. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I grow tired. But this is Jimenez and um, Hall Jr. Yeah. yeah. Peterson well, looks right. great. Peterson looks like he's going to gel. Oh, yeah. Peter, Peterson, well, so yeah, I, I think, you know, he at the very least has moved ahead of, uh, you know, Porcello Porce- and uh, Waka Waka. Waka Waka. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a summer camp in the Poconos. <laughs> waka Waka. 
Yeah, I'd like to see uh, how this uh, Colomi kid does also, you know? Yes. I mean, he should he should get some innings because if they keep playing like they've been playing, uh, they're going to they're gonna be out of it. Uh, and, you know, they might as well see what these guys have, uh, you know, give them, right. maybe even start them, you know, hey, toward the end of the year. you got to give Cano his due. Marty said something funny, or Robert said something funny. He's going to be tested every day now. Yeah. Um, but um, I think they're not concerned about that at, at this point. I think the well, testing has. No, actually, Cano has been pretty good. You got to say. You yeah, know, he's, he's been, hitting. Well, he, I mean, yeah, he's the I only mean, one that's swinging a bat. Yeah. Not, a, not a clutch bat, but he's the only one getting hits. Yes. Yeah, I, I, um, I think he. Uh, I think he got a couple of ribbies tonight, if I'm not mistaken. I think he does. Yeah, they're up five nothing right now. Yeah. Wow. And Rosario. Elizabeth, and Rosario this, is the big, be, this is the big one, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> and Rosario had to take be taken out of the game with an apparent pulled muscle in his leg. Rosario, yeah. Uh, Oh, no. Yeah, that's not very good. Uh, so he uh, it looked like he pulled something running the first base. He went out to the field, and the trainer and the manager came out and they walked him off the field. So the manager is now playing oh, short. Oh, good, good, good. Look to, uh, look, look to see him get a shot. See, uh, yeah. see him play every day for a few days. Yeah. That would be good. Uh, very nice. Now, of course, McNeil didn't play start because he's got a stiff back. So. Oh, I didn't hear that. Jesus. Yeah. Oh, man. So I heard that uh, uh, J.D. Davis wasn't going to play because he had an upset stomach, and then I guess he must have felt better. And then now that McNeil couldn't play, M- McNeil was going to be in left tonight. Uh, right. So, all right. Well, whatever. Yeah. Hey, you guys, were, you guys were messaging before that Dom Smith – is the son of J.D. Smith. Am I correct? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. No, no we oh, were, okay. But what happened was we were talking, and uh, Marty meant to say J.D. Davis had, had a stomach, stomach ache and wouldn't and be I, playing. And I said, said J.D. Smith. <laughs> J.D. Smith, a running back from with the, the 49ers. 49ers. Right. I used to hang with him. at the. Oh, he's an Oakland guy, and... <laughs> A great guy, and I'd sit in the hot tub, big old hot tub at the <laughs> Oakland Y, beautiful Y, by the way. <laughs> Everything's closed now. And he was, um, he would talk um, just ball. He was, he had three or four years with the Niners, mm-hmm. and it was before they were great, uh, but he he was just down to earth and talked. And you know what the talk was about the day that I really listened to him? It was about football tight or wide receivers. And he and a bunch of his buddies um, who whose names either I forget or never got all perked up when he said the best ever was uh, was Wells. Of, of uh, the Raiders. I blank on his first name. Really? You know, you know what? Um, oh, uh, uh, the guy who was caught going across the Golden Gate Bridge on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> um, he like had a lot, a lot of problems. Of um, what's his Warren Wells? Up, guys? Warren, Warren Wells. Wells. Warren Wells, yes, Warren Wells, unbelievable um, pass catcher. So mm. that's what I remember. I thought you meant I, I skim read, read it. It was uh, not Dom Smith uh, after <laughs> all. I thought wouldn't that be something <laughs> if he was Dom Smith's dad? He was old in 1995, so mm. that would really be something. Mm. J.D. Smith. Um, <laughs> Oh, Ramos anyway. just did a two-run homer, Ralph. Oh, good. So seven good. 
Seven zip. Can uh, they with, hold with, it? With Degrom going, uh, if they lose yeah. this game, I quit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> well, I would put number. How m- if they lose this game, I quit. Number one thousand six hundred and fifty-two. <laughs> I take a match and or a big lighter, mostly a big lighter these days, to my Met stuff as if I'm going to burn it and all at once, just put it in a big pile, all my shirts, all my caps, (laughs) and and just burn it and uh, play out my option. If Jonas can do it, I can do it, but I choose not to because I have integrity. (laughs) And when I do it, I will announce it to everybody first. I'm not going to just turn up missing in some strange hotel room because well, that's I don't, the you know, kind of guy I am. still may happen, Ralph. That still may happen. <laughs> right. <laughs> it certainly may, believe me. It, the, the thought crosses my mind on a very regular basis. I wanted to compare this PR disaster because it was a disaster especially a lot. Nemo is one of the players claiming that, yeah, we knew about it and they were covering it up and Mm -hmm. didn't know what to say. They wanted transparency or lack thereof. Well, they didn't want to cover it up, but they had to cover up that statement. But um, compare that to Gil Hodges' tragic passing and them announcing at the funeral that Yogi Berra is going to be the next manager. The interim manager. The interim manager. Um, yeah, well, they, they had everybody had, together. Uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> it never, it, whatever they said about it, it seemed really low class to do that. And, um, that's well, you know, the way it goes. So. The Yankees did something similar, and Bob Lemon was still there. Remember that? Oh, yes. They yes. announced no. Billy Martin's going to be the manager next year, and Bob oh, Lemon. Oh, at you know, Old Timers? Yeah. He comes and, out yeah. at Old Timers game. Unbelievable. Ah, yes. Uh, yes, and Lemon, <laughs> my, poor Bob Lemon. Oh, um, Bob, um he lost a kid. He was going. His life was going along so great, and he lost an adult son. Um, somehow, I don't remember what it was, but um, he was pretty broken after that. Um, that was those years with the Yankees were a, a zoo, as uh, Goldenbach wrote in um, wrote for Sparky Lyle. Up at the Bronx Zoo. Yeah. Wow. Um, crazy wasn't years. A, wasn't that Greg Nettles? Might have been. Might have been. I'm. Um, I've got lost balls myself. Uh, or <laughs> how does that go? That's another book that I always confuse. Um, laws about the ABA. You yeah, can Harry help me Pluto. Terry Pluto. There was two. There were two books. One was Lost Balls, and there was another one. And uh, I'm always confusing those two. I'm getting old and doddering. I confuse a lot of things. Time to write a book, and I yeah. am. I am <laughs> dictating. Uh, have you guys heard about it? It's um, absolutely it should be good. Very yeah. serious. Um, I'm dictating it into a machine that transfers it to print. And um, that is because I couldn't do it any other way. I have been typing as a super as a super senior in Newtown and I would do it with two fingers. So <laughs> I'm doing that and I'm talking about um a lot of things. I'm talking about my tops experience. And I'm talking about the um, this very, um, well, let's call it a network, and it is. And I'm talking about the folks involved in the network, you guys included, people like 
uh, Peter Golenbach, Hal Bach, mm. David Hubler, Lenny, Lenny Randall. Who's going to be the editor? Uh, it's going to be George Grimm, who I am writing it um, as told to. Uh-huh. George Grimm is, is a hockey writer. He's published two books. He uh-huh. is also a fellow podcaster. He wrote the article on the on the network and myself in Seniors um, Something Magazine, <laughs> Super Seniors Magazine, that um, is on. I'll figure that one out in a minute too. It goes along with long balls and a fading memory. Um, <laughs> but. It, He's going. He's going to do the editing, and I've got a bunch of stories, including uh, you and I, Mert, growing up, and um, wow. all baseball stories. And uh, one of the things I'm going to do is basically um, transpose the some key podcasts and talk about them, and. Um, one of them I'm planning to um, put in there is your incredibly good, well-done interview with Marty Appel on um, Casey Stengel's book. Whoa. Marty? What? So, yeah. Remember you had an interview with Marty Appel on this network? I, I think we... Didn't we do that together? I mean, uh, uh, no, you did that alone. No, I don't yeah, I contributed very little to it. You basically did it alone, and that's one of the things I'm most proud of on the network. Really? Mert, <laughs> we were ten years old, going on the bus, going to the Y. The uh, year the Giants and Dodgers were were moving, and we yeah. were talking about that back yeah. then. Yeah, so. This in a book is going to be very nice. This part of the book is going to be very nice. Wow. So I'm really psyched about that. And a bunch of other stuff. I've lived a um, Walter Mitty-type life with my tops trip and uh, Mm. getting to know a bunch of people that um, helps make, make me a more informed baseball fan. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. so there you go. That's what I've been doing. I'm taking two hours a day and devoting devoting it to that. I do my thinking while walking around, and I've got the machine to talk into. into. So um, I'm a happy little Jewish kid these days. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that sounds really good, Ralph. So, what's yeah. the uh, estimated... Uh, uh, it was going to be June of uh, 2021, but uh, I put it up to January of 2021. Really? Because of the convenience of um, being able to transpose mm-hmm. my thoughts onto um, my verbal thoughts onto paper. Um, incredibly time saving. Yeah. That's so. Great. And um, so what? What is this machine that that you have, Ralph? It is something I downloaded from. It's an app that will um, you can talk into um, on the smartphone, and it will print out what you're saying. And then, in other words, I can put a chapter in, print it out. Put the commas in, edit it any way I want, and send it on its way. So, is, is it a freestanding machine or an app on the it, computer? It's an app on the computer. Okay. It's an app on okay. the smartphone. That's great. Yeah. 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 End so, up doing away with keyboards altogether. <laughs> absolutely. So, or at least for the first part of it. Yeah. And um That's great. Yeah, so I'm very excited and I 
hope to get into the Hall of Fame as the first podcast, um, first podcaster in the writers section of the Hall of Fame. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Would that be something? You can come and visit on visit me on in Cooperstown for the induction <laughs> ceremony. I am a dreamer. I am a daydreamer from day one, and um, I, you never know. You, um, that's what I would like to have happen. And to be honest with you, well deserved. Because if you look at the quality of the podcasters and the shows on this network, um, it's um, it's top notch. I used to think that I was the poor man's Dick Shap, you know, who had, <laughs> remember him? Oh, sure. And, yeah. Um, yeah, Sports Reporters. Original. Sports Reporters. Original. And uh, yeah. this network is, seems to have gone that route, and I will match guys like Hal Bach, Peter Golenbach, Lenny Randall, Skip Lockwood. Sure. Marty Rose, Robert Cole. I can go on and on, and I have. This so, <laughs> all right. Very good. Anything else to look forward to coming up with the Mets? Uh, and then uh, I have a final question for both of you. I think they got uh, Washington coming up next, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, I think a couple of them are on uh, network. Also, the next next couple of days. So, uh, well, and the biggest thing to be watching though is uh, how many more guys go down. You know, there's, well, there's some, yeah. more of the, some more Cardinals. Yeah, how are they going to make was, these games? That was that was going to be my question: Is this thing, and what's the over and under on games? Um, I don't know and, how they're ever going to make them up. I mean, yeah. what the Phillies have played like what four games total? Uh, oh, know. the Marlins have played three. Three, I think. Yeah. I think you're right. Um, so you get you know like this week, <clears throat> the Yankees are trying to make up games with the Phillies. Yeah. So a game that they were supposed to play with the Rays, okay, they're now going to make part of a double header with the Rays. Uh, you know, they're making the schedule up on the fly. Yeah. They may not have this to, is have gonna to play, play. This is going to play havoc with the cardboard. The cardboard? <laughs> the cardboard little cardboard people in the stands. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> you got to move them around, and this is going to be horrible. <laughs> it's going to be horrible. Okay. Is the season going to be complete? Start with you, Robert. Yes or no? No. Marty. Mm. Ah, man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say yes only because of, of the TV money, which is the only money they have coming in. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I believe uh, I looked this up, and it was Lance Berkman that first said it's always – about the money. About the money. Yeah. It, it was Wayne Unger that said that first. Always Wayne follow Unger. the money. <laughs> That's what his big thing is. Always yeah. follow the money. And he, well, he's right. Yeah. Um, what do you think? I'm, ah, that's, that's if you throw money into the equation. I will say though, there was one pitcher. I don't know with the Red Sox, who came down with the virus, he's now got heart problems. Yeah, so... Rodriguez, I think his name is. Right. Now, are the owners going to put Freddie Freeman for him? He's playing again. He had a very serious bout. And I'm going to put my old insurance man's hat on. If you're going to give a guy insurance, if you're life insurance... You apply for it. There are certain actuarial tables that are affected by how the guy is, both mentally and physically, the job that he does, what have you. I doubt if 
someone who's had the disease, and that you don't have to be an athlete for this, anybody who comes down with this, are they ever going to get standard rates for insurance? Is their life expectancy being affected more than we know sometimes? We don't know jack about this virus. No. And we're, we're finding out that it's affecting um, people's cir- circulatory system, blood clots, kidneys, um, liver, whatever. So um, I don't know good common sense, and we've got, got to have some sort of survival to have reached 73, all three of us. We were obviously thinking along those lines all our lives. I don't understand why... Wh- I mean, the money is money. How important is it? It is important, but next to health, putting money, it sounds like we've regressed as a society that that's what's coming to mind. And um, To me, Ralph, the only thing that's going to stop it is if the uh, players' union decides to stop it. So they're all know, about we're, money. They're all about money. If they well, were a real good union, they'd be a, about the health and welfare of their members. That's what, and it has to go beyond the bucks. Not just with base, with baseball. The greed in in um, in business causes the chairman of the board to make forty times, forty five times more per hour than the working guy. There has to be, you can call it socialism, whatever, there has to be some sort of balancing of it all, a redistribution of the wealth, because there's enough money not being taxed in the church and in big business that would everybody would be fed. There'd be nobody hungry, no homeless. And the the curious would be educated. There's enough money for that if you just reappropriate it. And at this point, you can't tell me that these multi-billionaires who will always have enough to live for the rest of their lives should be able to pass on that money without letting society have a little bit of a benefit. But that's my... Um, socialistic, liberal, left-wing rant of the day, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Ralph <laughs> Zig Tycho. Annoying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell your friends. Thinking of All talking right. about it annoying, uh, the Grom's not doing that great. 87, yeah, pit- the runs. 87 pitches in the fifth inning, 7-2, to two, guy on second. I mean, and, and Familia's warming up. So. Oh. <laughs> Familia. Now, oh, now I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll take back what uh, I said. All right. So um, we don't want to lose you just in case, Mert. Um, <laughs> yeah, I we'll, guess I won't quit if they blow it. But all I'll right, good. Live to do this another week. All right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. This has been fun as usual for me, and it takes my mind off uh, life itself, which is uh, there you go. a bizarre world. Could you Right, cathartic. Could you ever imagine the world being the way it is? I'm just talking about Rod Serling couldn't do this, he, and he was good, <laughs> but he, he couldn't have written this the way it is. No. Well, Rod uh, Serling didn't know that Donald Trump was going to be the president. Well, exactly. He's who I had in mind. Who today, after all this time, is still taking a shot at telling people that that quack medicine was okay. I mean, I heard that today. Uh, on, I had to turn that off. Before. A lot of things make me sick these days. So It, it makes you wonder, okay, how much of a stake 
his companies having that because they bought, the, the United States bought hundreds of millions of doses of that and have it in the stockpile. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Hy hydrochloroquine? That's yep. stuff. Hydro <clears throat> hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine. Okay. Right. Okay. And you know what he said that was stupid? He says... The stuff works on lupus and on something else. Ebola, and it yeah. Does. yeah and Ebola it does. Yeah, yeah, That's good. what it was made for. It was made for lupus and for malaria. Well, right. And he saying s stupid stuff like that is like we took science with Mr. Bauer in junior high school. <laughs> I, and I was, as usual, not ahead of the game. And I realized the stupidity of that statement. And it, you know, again, um, I I don't want to run for the this. Uh, I don't want to be in the running. And as a matter of fact, I am going to refuse no matter what. But um, this guy's a freaking moron. How about that? Yeah, no question. All right, let's hope uh, that. Nobody really gave them the code to the to the weapons to the yeah. nukes. <laughs> Can you imagine they're talking up? We're not going to give this guy the code. Fuck that! Are you kidding? <laughs> There's got to be somebody with some sense. And let me tell you something: that somebody, to be serious for a second, was McConnell this week, because with all the babble about putting off the election, McConnell comes out there and he says, we've been putting elections together in this country for 200 plus years. I can assure you that on Tuesday, November 3rd, we will have a voting. In other words, and he also said to his fellow senators, Republican senators, divorce him if you see fit. Whoa. In, did he um, say that? Her, yes. Okay. Yes. Wow. So um, I think, and um, um, it's just a wild guess, but Amendment 25 can't be far from it because they are not going to win. And if Pence does an Amendment 25, that means he's president. And he's the incumbent president, um, if you will. So, um, and I'll be honest with you, Pence, you could throw Pence, Romney, and Biden in the mix. And there's not that much difference between the three of them. I mean, Pence is the crazy born again. Biden, uh, um, uh, Romney belongs to a cult, a Christian cult, and um, and uh, Biden is uh, he's got a lot of baggage. So yeah. if Trump doesn't win, it, it will be interesting. If Trump doesn't run, for one reason or another, pray God, it will be interesting from from that standpoint. Um, I was thinking, who would you? That would be interesting. Who would you vote for? Parties notwithstanding, and the and the Supreme Court doesn't matter. It seems as much because you got guys appointed by conservatives, take going becoming liberal and what have you. So if you take the Supreme Court out of the Supreme Court out of the equation, who would be better, Biden? Romney or Pence? Start with you, Robert. Take one. <laughs> wow. Uh, damn, I, I I don't know. Ah, uh, it's a good question. It's a good question, then. Yeah. Um, I don't. I can't tell you that I know. I can't see myself under those circumstances voting for any of them, but we always go with the lesser of two evils. Mert, do you have an opinion? Uh, well, 
I could, unless there are three I, evils. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, there's nothing. I have nothing against Romney. I think he's pretty smart. He knows his stuff, right. and I think he'd do a good job. Uh, you know, Pence, I can't. I just wouldn't trust on account of uh, him leaving everything to uh, the man upstairs all the time. You know, which is right. irre- irrelevant. And uh, and and Biden, um, I you know I I I'd vote for Biden. Um, I think uh, you know he had he had the VP experience. He sat in the rooms for four years with Obama and everybody. So he, he, he you know he's indoctrinated to the system. He knows what's going on. Um, you know I would throw Pence out immediately, and I you know I'd have to think about. The other two, but you know, it's it's just so important to turn the Senate over that uh, you know I'd, I'd have to go with Biden in that in that situation. Okay. All right, guys, thank you very much. It was fun, and uh, we got some food for thought there at the end. All right, Ralph. Robert, anything you want to add to it, and then I'll ask Marty the same. Nope, nope. Okay. Pretty much uh, um, took care of it. Good, uh, Marty. Yeah, you're happy yeah. with the way it went. Well, yeah, everything. You know, everything's fine. I just uh, just hope the Mets can win this game. That's that. That's a one game at a time. Let's win this game. Uh, don't blow it, please. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, overall, with everything that's wrong with the with what they've done to bastardize the rules, seven inning double headers, this, that, and the other thing. It's nice to have baseball back. Well, yeah, it's still it's still baseball. You know, no That's matter true. what they do. That's it. Yep. And you know, unlike college baseball, you don't hear a ping in the bat. No, no you don't. <laughs> That's awful. Exactly. That awful. All, right. All right. Have a great week. Stay safe guys. You too guys. You too, Ralph. Okay, all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. It's been fun for all three of us. Comfortably Zoned Radio Network. Happy trails. Good night. The proceeding has been a Comfortably Zoned Network production. You are advised to keep your dreams wet, your humor dry, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting offices and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening, everyone. Happy trails.